Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're going to talk about Megan Fox. And I know we've been talking about Megan Fox a lot lately. And it's like, I can't remember in the last 10 years when I said the words Megan Fox at all. And now it's like, Megan Fox, like all the time. But she's been in the news a lot for her divorce from Brian Austin Green, her relationship with Machine Gun Kelly that's bananas, but you know I ship. And now, because she is opening up about how people call her a slut for this relationship, even though she's been married and in a relationship for 15 years with BAG. So we have all been there, right? We've been called a slut or a bitch or a dummy, whatever it might be. And erasing that reputation, living in contrary to it, or just not letting it get to your soul is difficult. So we're going to unpack some scientific studies about why people get slut shamed, who's doing the majority of it, also what we can learn from this whole fiasco, how we can live contrary to the rumors about ourselves, and craft that inner authenticity that is shame proof. Whether it's slut shaming, fat shaming, poor algebra skill shaming, or whatever. We're going to break it all down. But first, I just want to remind you to follow me on Instagram. This is where you guys suggested this topic. I love it when you weigh in. It's a true democracy in action. And sometimes in this country, that's all we got. <laughs> also, follow me on Infstream. It's our sexy new platform where we're doing all sorts of sex tutorials, hookup tutorials, kissing tips, dirty talk 101, which I have like literally gone back and rewatched my own video. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to rewrite this down because I'm beep, boop, 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 texting it to a boy. <laughs> also, if you want a video shout out or a pep talk, birthday wish for a friend, find me on cameo that way. And be sure to join our Shell Literature book club. We're breaking down the book Why Men Love Bitches. You can pick it up at the Amazon link below where it says join the Shell Literature book club. And we're doing a whole bunch of videos on that and also talking about it on the podcast Girl on Top out every week. So let's talk Megan. So as we know, a quick TLDR of Megan's life recently. She was with Brian Austin Green literally, yeah, for 15 years. She has three kids with him. Gorgeous kids. Gorgeous kids, never stop birthing. I'm so glad she had three. Have, a, have 11, beautiful, adorable children. But they're over and she has rebounded with Machine Gun Kelly, or at least we thought it was a rebound, but it is looking super intense. Like we're twin flames, we're souls that are united in a transcend. I mean, we've talked before about how you can't act the way she does and talk the way she does like a crazy person selling crystals and dream catchers by the side of the road unless you look <laughs> like she does that's the piece of the puzzle but Megan's looks have always kind of worked against her in terms of public opinion she has been called a slut and a bitch I mean since she appeared on the scene and it's not guys always who are calling her that we know ladies that so much of the bullying and harassment and shaming that we get from people is from other women, right? It's, I mean, <laughs> this is not a video absolving guys of their shit ass behavior, not, not by a long shot. But I think it's more hurtful when it comes from women. Cause it's like, Brittany, God damn it. You're supposed to be on my team. You're in my sorority for Christ's sakes. We're actually gonna be looking at some studies that people did on sorority girls and the ones who were calling each other sluts and why and what that meant. So I'm gonna talk about the term slut. What does being a slut mean? Because that's one of the things I asked you on my Instagram. How do you define slut? And I think a lot of us, we use slut for both good and bad things, right? It's like, oh, I like to dress slutty. I'm getting all slutty dressed up. You know, like, I, and my friends are, you know, we say that to each other. Oh, you dress all hoey tonight. Clearly, we don't mean it in a bad way, but that's the thing with language. It's not about the actual semantics. It's about how you mean it. It's about intentionality. It's not the message. It's the medium, as they say in communication. Like you can say the exact same phrase to someone in a different tone of voice, and it has a completely different meaning. Look at that slut dress like that. Versus, look at that slut dress like that. Like totally different, totally different. And same with calling girls a slut. I, I said on my Instagram, it's like, Megan, don't stress. Being a slut just means you're very good at one particular thing. I mean, you're an expert. You're expert level and something great. Clearly, though, nobody wants to be called that. But when we talk about slut in a negative way, I because I asked you guys on Instagram, like, how do you define slut? And some of you had really, really good answers. Somebody said, I define a slut as someone who goes after taken men. It's like, okay, valid. Uh, somebody else said, 
and this, this is the one I love. She said, slut to me implies cold-blooded behavior. You're hooking up to gain your identity from, from a hookup. And we talk about warm and cold-blooded on here. That's like kind of one of our, our main things, our, our tenants, our 10 commandments. <laughs> and shallow, we got some commandments. Warm-blooded people, we don't, we don't need the outside stimulation. Like a warm-blooded animal, we regulate everything from the inside. We're not living for likes. We're not living for approval. Cold-blooded people, like a cold-blooded animal, they gotta get everything from their outside environment. They are living for the likes. They're posting the thirst traps constantly and they're hooking up because they need people to like them. And that's always kind of been my definition of a slut. Like if I was going to really categorize, not just like throw it around as like a slang term, but like if I was gonna be like, slutty behavior is not, it's not how many people you've slept with, it's why. I went through slut periods where maybe I slept with three people in a year, but I consider that a slut period because I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I was drunk or high and I'm like, I, you know, I, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I needed someone to like me. I wanted to be socially included. I was too afraid to say no. Those are bad reasons to get into bed with someone. And it made me feel slutty in that I define slutty for myself as not in control. No, I don't have mastery over the situation. I don't have mastery over my feelings. I feel like a kite in a windy sky. You know what I mean? And so I think that's kind of a good way to define it. Not like we should be calling anyone a slut. We're not going to be doing that. But I, I always like to unpack the etymology of things. You know, I love words and I love to get into meanings. And I love to get into semantics. So I really agree with that, that it's, it's about intentionality, you know, like, People call Bella Thorne a slut a lot. And in my mind, when I think of slut, like, oh, she does kind of, she does pop up. She's a very, very smart girl. And she's a very sweet girl. She's a very sweet girl. I know a lot of people who know her. But it's it's the, the thirst trappiness that I'm like, ah. And that's why I think in my mind, I associate those terms with her. But even though she's not, it's like she, she doesn't hoe around at all. And even if she did, get it, get it those numbers up. Get them up. Practice. Be good at it. Be a slut. Do whatever you want. Have fun. But make sure that whatever you're doing is truly authentic. That's the key. That's the key. And that is what hurts me when I see girls engaged in so-called slutty behaviors. It's like, is this authentic to you, baby girl? Why are you doing this? Why are you showing your hoo-ha on an OnlyFans? Like, is this genuinely making you happy? Not happy in the moment, not that like, that like candy high happy, but is it nourishing you? Is, is this behavior nourishing you? And for some people, yeah, it is. And it's like, okay, great. Like, I don't care. I, I as an individual, I don't care. Do whatever you want. I just want to make sure all we're doing as women is truly nourishing us and feeding us, you know? So that's kind of where I break down the slut definition. Can you imagine if that whole thing was a dictionary definition? It'd be like 11 pages. It's a complicated term because women are complicated creatures, right? People have called me, <laughs> I mean, unspeakable, unspeakable things on the internet, you know? And it's like, really? Okay, what? And it's easy for everyone else to say, brush it off. You know that that's not what you are. It's like, well, do you want to be called that word? No, you don't. So it's easy for us to say, it's like, but you're not a slut. Who cares? But when it's us, when we're the one receiving that, it's very dismissive when people say that because then not only are you wounded or are you just like shocked and, and horrified, now they're making you feel stupid. So remember that your experience is completely valid and your wounds are completely valid and it's almost worse when you're not whatever people are saying you are. You're not a slut, you're not lazy, you're not unworthy, you're not mean, you're not a drunk and out of control. Like. When I think about insults that like really like got under my skin from like girls that I knew, it was things that weren't true. It's like, what? You think I'm somebody, wait, what did a, a girl I know say the other day? She said, she said I was weak. I'm like, weak? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe that rankled me because I try very, very hard to be strong. You know, and that's, and so it's like she was calling me exactly what I don't want to hear and what I feel like I live my life in contrary of being. I don't know. There's always something to unpack. My hair is just, I'm home in California. The water is bad. I'm also lazy as fuck when I'm here. And so I've got this like point break weird surf hair. It's just, it's my hair's world and I'm just living in it. 
All right, I'm not even wearing a bra. Just, I'm, it's lawlessness out here. Anyway, I think, like I, I tell you guys, I've told you guys this before. I took a storytelling class when I was in college. And one thing they said is that children latch onto certain stories and fairy tales for very deep reasons, very deep reasons. Like I latched onto Sleeping Beauty because I was, you know, my mom traveled a lot for work and so I was raised by my my grandparents a lot and so was Aurora, you know, and then she was fantasizing about like drifting off into an exciting new world. And that's, that like really, really resonated with me and I was like five, you know? Same with insults. Insults hit us in certain ways because they're kicking something up. But again, that doesn't mean they're true. And even if they are true, you still don't want this. So let's hear what Megan has been saying. Her interview is a wild ride from start to finish. So we're just going to do, we're going to do some excerpts. <laughs> she's so bananas. Thank fucking God she's hot. But it just goes to show the elasticity of being a hot chick that you can become this like bananas and people are still like, yeah, the crystals. Uh-huh. You know, like, again, don't try this at home. She said, for whatever reason, people are very trigger happy to call me stupid or call me vain or call me a slut, which is crazy. I was in the same relationship for 15 years, you know? It's bizarre, this image that gets projected onto me that people have just accepted and that I've lived for over a decade. Sorry, I should be doing it in her voice. And that I never really did anything to earn in the first place. She's got that like slow talk where her mouth moves down a lot when she talks. Sort of hypnotic. And then she talked about um, life in quarantine. She, you know what, just, <laughs> she talked about filming in Africa. I had a sixth sense Africa was going to change my life. I knew the universe was calling me there for some reason and I had a huge breakthrough there. And I immediately transcended into a higher space where I decided that I've lived so much of my life from a place of fear, a place of making myself small. And I'm tired of doing that. I wanted to live in a different way. I made that choice while I was there and I've been making that choice every day since and everything has changed. I fucking love her. Like, I love everything she's saying. It just comes in such this like hippy dippy package. It's so funny. But like everything she's saying, I'm like, yes, like a place of fear and making yourself small. And like, I, I have noticed that with her trajectory. She was a huge, huge star. I remember... I don't know, whatever year it was, 2010 or something in her heyday. It was like the New York Post and all like New York media. They're like, today is the day without Megan Fox. No pictures, no articles. They, they did like a 24 hour moratorium because it was all anyone was talking about all the time. And uh, I don't know. And it, and then she just kind of like vanished and she vanished into like motherhood and wifeyhood and all this stuff. And I was like, fuck, what a waste of those perky tit years. You know, I guess they're less perky because you've had kids, but still still a smoke show girl you're only 34 now so I'm glad to see that she is like out and about I want to see slutty Megan Fox and I'm using that term in a loving way I want to see her out in like the hot pants and and more lingerie ads and like slithering around on the hood of a car work it use that body use that face don't keep it cooped up at home right so I'm using the term slutty in a very positive way a lot of people who talk about her are not. And I guarantee that a lot of people calling her a slut for this Machine Gun Kelly thing are his fans. His fans are... If you're a fan of his and you're a fan of mine, clearly you are like a quality person. I have seen a lot of Machine Gun Kelly fans and I'm like, you are one step away from an insane clown posse gathering. Like you just, I don't know what's going on here, but I just want to hose you down and just like scrub you clean. Cause this is, take out all these pierces. Don't, don't pierce anything there. Don't do that. Just let's, let's do less. Let's all do less. And this is, this dovetails into what studies are showing about slut shaming. That it is a lot of women. It's a lot of women. Of course it's, let's talk about why it's men. Fucking garbage. It is misogynistic, beta mailed cucks with small, little, flaccid wieners. That's who calls someone like Megan Fox a slut. We talk about leveling a lot. When our ego, our sense of self, our sense of place in the world, our sense of value feels disrupted, like something challenges it, something better comes along, something, some not something, someone more successful, someone out of our league comes along, we do something called leveling. We either puff ourselves up 
or we cut the other person down until we feel better or equal than them, right? Overwhelmingly, people tend to cut other people down, you know, and they'll puff themselves up too. It's usually a combination. But men who call Megan Fox a slut are doing that because they're in their mom's fucking basement covered in Doritos dust, jizz all over their 10 day unwashed sweatpants playing World of Warcraft, okay? The dudes calling Megan Fox a slut are not titans of industry because you know what? They don't see her as out of their league. They're like, that's exactly who I should be dating. That beautiful girl, because I'm a beautiful man. She's a successful, strong, sexy woman. That's crazy, so am I. Alphas seek alphas, you know? And we don't talk about alphas here in the way sometimes like modern media talks about alpha. It's like, oh, like a gorilla and I'm an alpha. No, no, no. An alpha is truly the best thing we can be. Alphas in, in a pack, like in a wolf pack, they're not only pack leaders, they're pack builders. Barack Obama, alpha. He's not looking to oppress other people. Donald Trump, beta. He's looking to oppress other people. So when he acts like that and we talk the way he talks, I don't see an alpha. I just see a very small man. Barack's got that energy. You know what I mean? One of them has a happy wife and one doesn't. Draw your own conclusions. So alpha is a good thing. And like I said, in a wolf pack, like the, the, the alpha wolf is at the end. He's at the end, making sure everyone's taken care of, making sure everyone's safe. He's looking around. He's got his little wolfy head on a swivel. I live in Montana. I know a lot about wolves now. And he is building the pack up. So when we see people trying to cut other people down, I'm like, uh-uh, now you have just showed your ass. Now I know what category you're in. And you can have beta females. You can have beta males and beta females. And it's important to know that the population is not only alphas and betas, not at all. Most of us are just normal people, just completely normal people. We have alpha traits. Sometimes we'll veer beta, that's okay. Beta is a very specific pathology, right? And it's not one or the other. So so don't don't think you're like, oh my God, if I'm not like this pack leader, I'm just this, this idiot. No, not at all. I wanna read you from some studies. Oops. It was, a, it was like a loose study that they did um, with sorority girls. And it, because, okay, in 2004, at the start of a semester at a Midwestern university, so secrety like, two of the four psychologists took up residence in a party dorm housing 53 women. All of the students were white and almost all were heterosexual. The scene, they said, was decidedly non-feminist. So they were talking about girls who get into the sorority. All the women liberally used the term slut when talking about peers who were not like them, behind their backs and occasionally in public. This usually happened when a lower status woman tried to join their clique, right? But apparently lower status women were not guilt-free of this either. They often refer to higher status women as sluts also when they felt jealous or picked on. Meanwhile, slut was a label that everyone involved wanted to avoid themselves. In private interviews, the women had become uncomfortable when asked how many sexual partners they'd had and gave researchers the definite impression that they were rounding down their answers. I mean, honey, round up, round out of zero. Like I said, being a slut means you're good at something. Sex is like anything else. You wanna be good at it? You gotta practice. I hate it when guys ask me, after we slept together, how many people I've slept with? I'm like, do, do you go to a concert? Do you go to the Boston Philharmonic and love it? And then afterwards you accost a violinist? It's like, have you been practicing? Wait, you, you've you been practicing outside of this concert. This, is, this wasn't the first time you've ever picked up a violin. I am disgusted, bitch. What did these young women mean when they used the term slut? The answer depended on social class. This is interesting. For higher status women, and they define this higher status women as the women who got into sororities. They were usually richer, thin, tan, blonde, well-dressed. Mm. <clears throat> For higher status women, it had little to do with serial sexual encounters. They reported feeling free to hook up and have many sexual encounters as long as they reserved vaginal sex, Ugh, vaginal, that word, for serious relationships. So basically, anything except for, you know, sex was like, fine, you could, you could be, you could hoe around, kiss, make out, oral, whatever, that's totally fine. 
For most of these sorority women, kissing, groping, or oral with a number of different men wouldn't necessarily have prompted their sisters or sorority sisters to call them a slut. But the same behavior would get lower status women to whisper about each other in such terms. For by and large, those women thought all forms of sexual behavior should be reserved for caring relationships. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. Higher status women, as this study defined as sorority girls, so popular girls, popular girls, as that status was defined in in that social structure. You know, this is this isn't my term. I sorority girls aren't popular to me. I'm an adult. I'm like, oh, you're okay. You know, I I don't care. And and that's interesting because when you become an adult, you don't have these social markers as easily, but you still have them. And we can talk about that another time. But the sorority the higher status, the more liberal their thoughts were. Maybe this is because they felt like they were queen of the mountain. So they could do whatever they want. Maybe it's an entitlement thing, but in a positive way. It's like, you know what? I'm popular. People like me. I don't have to worry about that. I have my social inclusion needs met. I'm going to branch out and I'm going to do it with my mouth on a whole bunch of different sigma guys, you know? Lower status women, as it's defined in these studies, perhaps don't feel like they have a social place. Maybe they feel ugly, unpopular, dumpy, whatever, whatever it might be. I don't know. And therefore they are more judgmental. What does this tell us? Self-esteem is the key to happiness. These lower status women didn't feel confident, maybe because they didn't get in the sorority and they wanted to, they were jealous of the Britneys and the, and the Kimberleys, whatever. So they were, they were turning that venom outward and they were calling everyone a slut, whether she just made out with someone at a party or whether she had a train run on her in the SAE bathroom, she was still a slut. You're a slut. I'm a good girl. You're a slut. Because that perhaps is the perceived moral high ground over these women. Okay. So she's rich and she's thin and she's tan and she's pretty and she's popular, but I don't hook up. Hmm. Interesting. And I hear that. I do hear that from you guys, you know, and the people, the the viewers here who have slagged Megan for these relationships or for her relationship with Machine Gun Kelly always default to the same thing. She should be home taking care of her kids like I am. Well, I mean, that sucks for you. I don't know. You don't seem too happy about it. If you were happy about it, why would you care that another woman was out doing something that made her happy? You know, happy people are happy for people. Bitter people are bitter about other people. You know, it's it's this terrible cycle. So what was fascinating about this study is that truly how you feel about yourself is exactly how you're going to feel about other women. And the things you hate in yourself, I'm not popular, I'm not this, I'm not cool, is what you are gonna tear down another woman for. Guys don't like me, I'm invisible. Fuck you, you slut that guys like. You're a slut. That's not a good thing that guys like you. That's not a good thing that you feel confident about your body. That makes you a hoe right? It's very easy for us to get into that place. It's very easy. I've been there. You've been there. We've all been there. And we, we can veer there if we're not careful. I've talked before about my life in New York and, you know, we talk about confidence and going into a party and feeling good about yourself. And I'm like, look, the parties I would go into had Bella Hadid in them. They had Kate Hudson over there. They had Emily Ratajkowski. It wasn't like McKaylee from Gamma Phi. No, they were like, no joke, empirically hot, popular on a global scale. So when I had to go in and be confident, oh, it was a test. And it was very easy. It would have been very easy to go in and be like, look at that slut Emily Ratajkowski. <sighs> I bet she's anorexic. I bet you're anorexic. I bet you're throwing up your food. Blech. But I didn't. I maybe thought that like, I, went through, I think I, you know, I of course went through a phase where I felt like that because I was so insecure. And then I'm like, you need to get it together because you feel awful right now. You came home from this event feeling awful about yourself, hating your body, hating your clothes, not caring about your accomplishments, hating Emily Ratajkowski or whoever it was at the time. It wasn't her because she's super lovely in person. She is not, I, I don't mean physically beautiful. She's the sweetest person, but <clears throat> she's also physically very beautiful. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't like feeling this way. 
I don't want to live like this. I'm going to be going to events four times a week for the next 10 years. Am I going to feel like this every time I go when I see a girl who's thinner than me? Because they're out there. Or a girl who's prettier or she's got a hotter boyfriend or she's done more with her life. I have to stop this somehow. So I'm going to stop it by literally as an experiment trying to get closer to these people, not further away. I'm going to say, ooh, I hate you and I love it. I am so jealous, but I like this. Because what is that jealousy telling me? I can be better. I, whatever I'm I'm honing in on her, it's like she's so thin. Okay, Shallon, do you, are you honing in on that? Because maybe you've been on the Lester Edithon for the last 11 weeks and you're feeling not good about your body and you haven't been working out, you've been drinking too much. Maybe that jealousy is kicking up something that you can do better in and of yourself. And it's not about hating yourself and trying to be like someone else. It's about listening to what your intuition is telling you. It's ringing a bell. And we always say about the psyche, she'll do things the easy way or she will do things the hard way. And it is easier to do them the easy way. It's easier to just listen to what she's trying to tell you. The things you hate in other people are the things you're trying to deny in yourself. Ugh, she's so thin. Shallon, get your workout routine together. And when I was like, okay, okay. We're back on keto. We're doing Pilates every day. Then things started to shift. I went to these events. I saw these beautiful models and I was like, hey, sister, I now felt on their level. I maybe didn't look like them. The results hadn't yet manifested, but I was on the path. And now my intuition was like, oh, thank you. God, thanks. Thank you for listening. I'm going to go take a nap. My intuition got the night off and I was able to enjoy myself and I was able to feel more in the realm of these girls. And ironically, that made me magnetic. That made me magnetic to other people, to them. I'm friends with Victoria's Secret models, you know, and I became friends with them once I got my own shit together, you know, and I was no longer like, oh, so spiky and prickly. They were not reminding me of everything I wasn't doing in my own life. I'm never going to look like one of them. I'm never going to be a thousand feet tall and a hundred pounds. I'm never going to have these huge boobs. That's fine. That's fine. That's not what it's about. It's about me being my best self. And therefore, once I started doing that, I was okay with whatever form that best self took because I knew I was doing the work. I'm like, okay, if I'm working out and I'm eating right and the, the thinnest I ever get is 125 pounds, okay. I'm going to be proud of myself because that's where my body wants to be. That's where I'm happy. It's better than being the weight I am now where I don't feel good. Not that I'm fat and not like you'd be fat if you were this weight. But, I, you know, we all have our happy place and our happy weight. And it's valid for every single person. Whatever your happy weight is, it's valid for you. But we're not talking about weight. We've done a lot of videos about this. We're talking about being a hoe. We're talking about being a slut. And we're talking about people who call you that. What do you do if you're on the receiving end of this stuff? Like I said. People have had a lot of opinions about me historically. <laughs> you know, I'm a polarizing person. Big symbols make big targets. That's okay. I'm strong enough to take it out. And I, it's like, I don't care because I don't know you. So your opinion has almost no weight with me. If you were my boyfriend's mom saying these things, ah, I wouldn't want to hear it. If you were my best friend, ugh. but it's like you're some dick on the internet. It's like, who the, who the fuck are you? Who fucking asked you in the first place? Why do I care? But it's not always that easy. Right? It doesn't mean that things aren't irritating and on different levels, they're goddamn devastating. If this is someone in your social structure, in your school, in your office, oh, we talked a lot about reputation before. The way to combat a bad reputation is simply to live in contrary of it, you know? Because then the people who call you a slut are going to look so stupid. It might not happen overnight. It might not. It might take six months for people to be like, like, Hannah, stop calling Brittany a slut. She's been with Connor for eight months. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And everyone's going to start to look at Hannah as an idiot and a jealous weirdo liar as a beta. And that's going to be very accurate. You have to keep on keeping on. That is the only option you have. And it's it's tempting, you know, to ask like, well, should I stand up for myself? Should I say, I'm not a slut, blah, blah, blah. One of you guys posted something really, really smart when I asked you to like weigh in on this slut topic. You said, 
when you own it, if you own that label, it takes the power away from other people. But sometimes when you try to defend it, you end up looking guilty and it makes it worse. I was like, that can, that can be really, really true. And we've talked about defending ourselves against rumors before I did a whole video on it. And there are times when you should stand and be like, excuse you. And there are times when it's like, okay, I'm a slut. I'm a huge, I'm just a hoe and a half. Now what? Oh, now what? Now you've taken the bullets out of their gun. What are they going to say now? Yeah, well, you well you are. I know, yeah. I've slept with a ton of people, and I'm good at it. I could fuck your man, too. Because you're a slut. Yes, we've gone over that. That's, that's what I am. Does that make you feel better, Crystal? Does that make you feel better? I feel fine. I feel the same. I feel all limbered up. You know why? Because I'm a slut. Been getting my back banged out all week. If you can, like, flip this around on them, it takes their power out. But like I said, that's not always possible and it's not always comfortable and it's simply not always feasible. But try it as a tactic. Try it. Because then you're 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 de you're de-arming these assholes. And Megan, ah, it's like with Megan, she's damned as she does and she's damned as she doesn't. And this is the hard part. And we've all been in this situation where it's like, Okay, people called her a slut when she was in Transformers and all this stuff. So she was with someone for 15 years. The only reason people maybe weren't calling her a slut then is because they just weren't here. She wasn't on the radar. So she comes out and one of the first projects she did in the last few years was a Fredericks of Hollywood thing, like this lingerie thing. You know everyone called her a hoe for that. And now she's like coupled up with someone else. She's a slut for this. And it's like, so if she's at home doing nothing, she's a slut. If she's out and about living her life doing what? I mean, a... a billion other women around the world are doing uh dating after a divorce not an extreme behavior wearing lingerie have you been to the beach i mean people are wearing the, are we still in a place where like belly buttons and butt cheeks are like scandals i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to tell you so she's getting it no matter what and therefore she's got to live her life and that is unsatisfying advice. I realize that. I wish I wish I was like, no, 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 this is the gun you get. <laughs> this is not like, <laughs> this is the gun you get. This is the roof you perch on and you just pick off your haters one by one. No, no, that's not it. That's not, that's, that's too evil, even for evil week. We don't go in that direction for evil week, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but the advice is you keep living your life. And most importantly, you craft a life that counteracts whatever people are saying about you. You need to have such a constant influx of data about who you are, what your traits are, what your wonderful gifts are to this world, that when people call you a slut or an idiot or whatever it is, you're like, <laughs> that's funny because I was volunteering at the food bank all week. I wasn't getting a train run on me. What were you doing? You have empirical data to counteract and I'm not saying this in a public form, not to counteract it in like the court of public opinion, to counteract it within your own self so that when these slings and arrows hit, they kind of bounce off. They're probably still always going to hurt. No one wants to be called things that they aren't. No one really wants to be called things that they are. But when we can default to, I actually know exactly who I am. Thanks for playing. We become bulletproof. And that's the goal. We can't stop what people are going to say about us. I've tried to live that life. We all have. Where we're like, I'm, I'm just going to, okay, someone thinks I'm this, then I, I'm going to overcorrect so hard so that I'm not. I mean, my whole, my whole life actually has been like that. Because I grew up without a father. You know, it was just me and my mom. And on paper, single mom, single daughter, I was probably supposed to be pregnant at 15, right? You know, that was, that's what we think. She's going to be a slut. She's going to be... Okay, that's funny. I'm not going to kiss anyone till I'm 18. I'm going to be a virgin till I'm 21. I'm going to write a book at 23. I'm going to have a TV show at 27. You go fuck yourself. I've spent my entire life trying to outrun this silent perceived reputation, you know? And there's a lot to unpack in therapy there, you know? And it's worked out, but it certainly had detrimental effects on my self-esteem. So my job now that I'm in my 30s and I'm an adult and I'm like, okay, I'm no longer beholden to this, this idea that I've had about myself is to craft that authenticity. What makes me happy? 
Is it being a hoe? Mm, is it staying home and baking cookies? Ah, at one time being a hoe made me very happy, very happy. Now, not so much. So when I can craft that, that true authenticity, what people say about me doesn't hurt as much. Does that make sense? So we have to go out and fill our lives. We have to have a 360 well-rounded life. Family, friends, volunteering is huge. You know I harp on volunteering all the time. It is so huge because it tells you and reminds you that you have value in this world outside your pussy, outside your weight, outside your grades, your income, what your family says about you, where you live. You are doing things that help other people. You're helping the world. You exist for a reason. And whatever people say about you, well, that's not what they said at the food bank. That's not what they said at the homeless shelter. They said, thank you. They said, God bless you. They said, I really appreciate you coming down here. You're going to hold on to those feelings and you're going to use that as this force field rah, to push off people who are trying to attack you out of their own insecurities. I want to know your experience with slut shaming, whatever, whatever it was. How did you get over it? Did it affect you in the long term? Does it still affect you today? And more importantly, let's be honest here, when have you called another woman a slut? What did that kick up for you? What was the scenario? If you don't know, like just tell the logistics of the situation and we can kind of unpack it and try to figure it all out together. Because I think it really is interesting to explore. Because look, dude, we can't expect men to stop calling us a slut if we are still calling each other a slut. Anyway, for more, click like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, find me on Instream. And if you want a video shout out, head on over to Cameo. Later, Shalligators.